Hello and welcome to another podcast episode of Powering Up Your Formulations, sponsored by BSF Performance and Formulation Additives. Well, my name is Louis Angeles. I'm your host uh, today and Global Additives Industry Marketing Manager in North America. I'm joined by my colleague, Tony Moy. Tony, welcome to the show. Could you please introduce yourself? Sure, Louis, and thank you for having me on the podcast. For the viewers and listeners out there, my name is Tony Moy. I am a technical specialist for BSF formulation additives, supporting the industrial coatings market segment. And I'm very excited to talk to you in depth about our topic for today, Louis. Right. Thank you, Tony. Well, uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, uh, an important topic in the industry, uh, the use of fluorosurfactants. And you know, Tony, well, this is a very well-known uh, topic in the industry. And we know the use of the fluorosurfactants uh, provide a variety of desirable performance features in the coatings. And also, these chemistries tend to be highly efficient, allowing for low usage levels of, and despite their expense, they present a reasonable cost and use value for the coating formulator. So uh, in recent years, however, regulatory pressure has increased around the use of floor surfactants in various industries. We have learned from our customers that they are removing and understanding where fluoro is present in products purchased. Some of them will not formulate with fluoro in the future or a stated no fluoro in launch consumer products resulting in a continuous support from our side to help them to move to the potential alternatives. I think uh, to respond to the change in the regulatory environment around the use of fluorosurfactants, we would like to know your perspective, Tony, and explain to the formulators who are listening to us which alternatives they may have and how our global additives portfolio help them to power up their formulations. So, Tony, I hand over to you. Thank you, Louis. So as the next slide is showing, there are a variety of positive performance aspects that floral surfactants can bring to a formulation. Uh, for example, chemical resistance, surface tension, reduction, flow, substrate wetting, pigment wetting, anti-cratering, quite a few aspects. The key message that I want to convey with this graphic here is that floral surfactants have a very broad breadth of performance aspects that, that it can bring to a coating. And as such, it is actually quite unlikely that you're going to find any other chemistry of an alternative surfactant that can do the same. So with that said, I'd like to talk a little bit about recommended formulation practice when it comes to replacing a fluoro surfactant. So as I said, fluoro surfactants provide a variety of positive coating features. Other surfactants typically can't match the same breadth of performance that fluoro surfactants bring. And it's important to determine the key feature which a fluoro surfactant is providing in a coating formulation. Uh, so rather than trying to um, get every aspect matched, match the one that's important for your coating. And then based on that, that uh, primary performance feature that you've determined that the fluoro surfactant is bringing in your formulation, choose alternative surfactants that can provide similar benefits in that space. So I've got a couple examples that I'd like to uh, helps solidify this concept. So my first example is a, where the floral surfactant is providing an easy to clean performance feature to a coating. So what does that mean? It means that it's um, making things difficult to adhere to the surface of a coating. So it does that through surface modification, lowering the surface energy, as well as the coefficient of friction. So one possible solution might be a silicone surfactant 
which similarly would provide a surface modification, lowering coefficient of friction, surface energy, and hence reducing adhesion of what we call quote unquote dirt. Uh, a second example that I would have would be where the forosurfactant is providing uh, good substrate wetting, especially on low energy substrates like plastics. So in the era of light weighting of vehicles and so forth, um, there's more and more emphasis of using polymeric materials to be uh, substrates uh, for a variety of uses. And as such, polymers tend to be very low energy substrates and difficult for adhesion of coatings. So a possible solution, well, there's actually a variety of surfactants that could work. These can include a variety of different chemicals such as acetylene diols, dioctyl sulfosuccinates or DOS, alkoxalate types, even silicones might have a play here. So here you can see in this example, uh, you may not have one clear cut solution. Uh, you might actually have a variety. And in, in these cases, you would have to do uh, a little bit of screening to determine which chemical family is going to work best for your application. So I hope that um, the concepts that I've, I've given in this particular slide um, have demonstrated uh, a good formulation practice and approach to uh, replacing fluorosurfactants in a formulation. Now, with that said, I'd like to talk about two new products that we have that I think could be useful in this space. First one is called Hydropallet WE3225. This is a silicone-based whiting agent with pronounced the foamy characteristics, provides excellent substrate whiting, can help eliminate surface defects, which could be caused by craters or air bubbles due to its defoaming characteristics. Also it is highly compatible with a variety of different resins. So for example, if you're making a wood coating that's clear in nature or transparent in nature, it's not going to obscure that wood grain. So it provides excellent wood grain accentuation. And from a sustainability aspect, it also has a good value proposition in that it's low VOC and low odor. OK, now I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the positive performance features that we've seen in coatings with Hydropallet WE3225. You'll notice on this slide on the top right, I have a graphic of a VCT tile uh, or a vinyl composite tile. And on this are two coatings. Um, these are low solids, water-based floor care coatings. On the left is a coating made with the fluorosurfactant. On the right is a coating made with Hydropallet WE3225. In this particular application, we're looking for a alternative surfactant that can help provide good flow and leveling. So what does flow and leveling mean? Flow and leveling is the aspect of where the coating will flow out over a substrate and provide a smooth air interface uh, profile. So very little texture, accentuated gloss, good DOI or distinctness of image. And here you can see in this graphic that the 3225 provides very similar DOI, texture, flow and leveling performance to that of the floral surfactant. So that is one case where it's brought a very positive benefit. Um, below that is its influence on gloss. Um, so depending on the a resin system you're using, in this case we looked at John Crow 1552 and compared it to two other uh, similar types of surfactants as benchmarks. And you can see as we increase the concentration of the surfactant, the gloss level goes up. Um, however, the 3225 seems to impact gloss to a higher degree than the two benchmarks. So this is another positive feature of Hydropallet WE 3225. So with that said, I now would like to introduce our second new product. Hydropallet WE3229. 
So 3229 is what I call the next generation product from HydroPallet WE 3225 it is just being launched. It is a Gemini silicone based wetting agent, um, has very similar characteristics to that of 3225, but is a completely different chemistry. So excellent substrate wetting, elimination of surface defects caused by craters and air bubbles, pro pronounced defoaming characteristics, easy incorporation, high compatibility, therefore excellent wood grain accentuation, also low VOC and odor. And this material is literally 100% solids and um, while I don't have data to show here, I can say that I have tested this in water-based floor care coatings alongside with the HydroPallet WE3225, and it performs very similarly, if not slightly better. And depending on the formulator's uh, application, if, for example, they're looking to replace a floor surfactant that is providing a flow and leveling feature, then HydroPallet WE3225 and HydroPallet WE3229 would be excellent candidates to look at. For other types of performance uh, features, I would recommend that the listener or viewer contact us directly and we can um, discuss their application and look at which performance feature they're trying to replace and make a, po uh, a good recommendation. Uh, to further explore an alternative. Well, thank you, Tony, uh, for these uh, insightful comments and great examples. Uh, we really appreciate uh, your perspective on, on this topic. And well, uh, just to finish uh, our episode, I encourage all our listeners uh, to reach us uh, using uh, our email. Uh, uh, contact information that you will see in the in the next uh, slide. But uh, before that, uh, please also uh, write into the formulation uh, additives uh, email, and please also visit uh, our website at bsf.us/dpsolutions or uh, look into our lab assistant. This powerful app uh, will. Uh, help you to find the uh, right additive and to formulate in a better way uh, any challenge that you have in the industry. So all uh, new features are coming and we highly recommend uh, to look into the app and uh, let us know any um, inquiry that you may have. So as I said, uh, these are our uh, contact information. Uh, you can see our uh, email address. And um, well, thank you very much uh, for uh, listening to us. Uh, we really appreciate your time. And Tony, thank you very much for uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, so, see you in the next episode. BASF, we create chemistry.